over the years, have you thought about coming forward? Yeah. So have any police ever come and knocked on your door and asked? No. No. You've been living with this secret for the last 12 years. Greg Lees knows the secret he's kept since he was a boy may well put his father behind bars for the rest of his life. It may also give a grieving family the answers they've been seeking for 12 long years. Okay, you'll be all right. We'll get over it. On the 18th of July, 1997, Megan Rose was found dead at the bottom of this cliff on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. She was 24. Within hours, Queensland police dismissed Megan's death as just another suicide. But did she jump or was she pushed? As soon as Megan Rose's family learned of her death here at the base of Point Cartwright, they suspected foul play. They firmly believed there was no way that Megan would ever take her own life. They were convinced she was murdered, and they've spent the last 12 years trying to prove that. From the moment that I opened the door to the police and they told me that she was dead, I knew before they'd finished getting it out of their mouth, that he'd killed her. I know that Keith Lees murdered my sister. Is it OK? Megan grew up in Morwell, in country Victoria. She was a girl guide and a Meals on Wheels volunteer and worked as a carer for the disabled. She was a fun-loving girl. She got her enjoyment and pleasure from family. I came into the family when Megan was two year old, just only a little tacker. So you've seen her grow up? Yeah, we've seen her grow up. We've been, been close to her all, all our lives. Megan was about that big. A year after this video was taken, Megan met Keith Lees at her work. Megan, who was financially secure with her own home and car, listened to Lees as he poured out his problems. He started relating what marriage problems he had, and Megan said, well, if you're ever stuck, there's always room at my house. And he moved in. The next morning, he moved in with a computer and a chest of drawers. Lees was Megan's first relationship, her first boyfriend. Then within a year, the pair moved to Queensland with 10-year-old Greg, Keith's son from a previous marriage. When she decided to go to Queensland, were you worried not? Yeah, extremely worried, because uh, I wasn't worried. Really, then we didn't fear for her life, but we knew that he was in her life for his personal gain. And he was 48-year-old and she was 22. Like, crikey, he, was a, he had uh, two failed marriages, bankrupt, and Megan had everything going for him. Like, goodness me, what's going on here? But the relationship quickly soured. A year after the move to Queensland, Megan rang her mother to say she was leaving Lees. So she was planning to come home. She was getting out of there. She had rang my mother on the Wednesday night to say that she was coming home. She was moving back home to Morwell. Two nights later, on the evening of July 17th, 1997, an argument broke out between Megan Rose and Keith Lees here in their apartment. What do you remember happened? All I remember hearing was the argument and then her slamming the door behind her and uh, driving away. It was around 10 at night and early the next morning, Megan was found dead at Point Cartwright. Keith Lee's alibi was that he stayed at home all night with his son, Greg. Police cordoned off the scenic spot to investigate the woman's death, suspecting she may have been pushed from the top of the cliffs. But by midday, they ruled out any suspicious circumstances. This particular case was investigated by the police. Uh, and there were no suspicious circumstances at all. One particularly callous police investigator dismissed Christine and Noel's fears about Lees. He told me she killed herself. 
get on with it. Up the top here and you go off a little bit to your left. Just down here now. So they began their own investigation. Why are you so sure that Megan didn't come here and kill herself? Pretty much all of her dreams had come true. Everything that she'd worked for had come, come to place. But there was, a price on it, there was a price on her head. The price on Megan's head was a $200,000 life insurance policy. The beneficiary was Keith Lees. According to her family, Megan thought she'd signed up for income protection, only to discover days before her death that it was life insurance. You had to be insured for 13 months to claim suicide. Megan had been insured for 13 months and three days. Lees didn't waste any time trying to collect. He identified her body at 12 or 12.30 on that day. He rang Tower Life at one o'clock and said that he was the beneficiary of this policy and he wanted it paid out. What did he have to do to get it? He also rang her employer and said, Megan jumped off a cliff last night. She's got wages due to her, so I'll give you my bank number and you can put it in there. So within half an hour of witnessing her body, he was claiming the life insurance. Plus her wages. So there is a motive, but worse still, Queensland police ignored other clues, including Megan's clothing, such as scuff marks on shoes, which suggest she could have been dragged. Oh, the clothes, that's huge. Because of the, the um, rips and, and the, the scratches on her shoes and the, the way her pants were, they're all consistent with being dragged. There was also Megan's car, which appeared to have been thoroughly cleaned, and then there's Megan's prescription glasses, which she often wore while driving. These are her glasses, right? They weren't found at the scene. Months later, Lees sent a parcel back to her family with the glasses inside. They were covered in sand. So you think he might have held on to them by accident? Yeah, and he's caught himself. I was hoping that he'd caught himself. But we'll never know because Queensland police refused to test the glasses. So Lees remained free and moved to the Queensland hinterland with another woman. When she refused to sign over a large family inheritance, Lees threatened to kill her. She went into hiding. So Lees returned to Victoria and found a new target. Did you kill Barry Water? No, I have not. I have not done anything to... I like Barry. Right. He had a lot of problems, OK? But I have no beef against Barry whatsoever. I have no reason to kill Barry. Barry Waters had a $150,000 life insurance policy. His wife, who Lees befriended, was the sole beneficiary. After Lees moved in as a lodger, Barry Waters went missing. His death was made to look like a suicide. But this time, Victorian police gathered enough evidence to charge Lees with murder. Because you're responsible for the disappearance of Barry Waters. I'm not. That. I say um, that is not correct. I'm not responsible for the Barry disappearance. Lees was convicted of murdering Barry Waters. He'll walk free in eight and a half years. As soon as he was arrested for, for um, the, the, the murder of Barry Waters, we thought, well, there you go. Look at this, there's proof. One of these Queensland police will sit up and take notice now. But they didn't. Queensland police told Megan's family there was insufficient evidence. If Keith Lees really did throw Megan Rose off this lookout at Point Cartwright 12 years ago, it was the perfect place for murder. At that time of night, it's dark, it's deserted, and there's no one else who witnessed what really happened. always been sly, always. Uh, it's just in his character. It's not guile, it's just pure slyness. That's all it is. It's like a fox. 
The evidence Greg Lees is about to reveal could see his father locked away for good. For the first time, he's agreed to tell what really happened that night. What do the rest of your family feel about this? Have you spoken to them about this? I mentioned that it was going to happen. Mum's not too keen on the idea, but got to do what's right. On the night Megan died, she argued with Keith Lees and left the house. Police accepted Lee's story that he'd stayed at home with Greg the whole night. Greg remembers that after Megan drove off, his father came into the room. Uh, I went to go to bed and he came in and said goodnight and then soon after that I heard him leaving as well. Now why do you know that he left the house? Because I went out to find out you know, if somebody was coming back in or if somebody has left and it was just me in the house. He was definitely gone. The following day, Keith Lees sat in on the police interview with Greg here at the Maruchador police station. Just before we went in, uh, out in the car park, he said, um, basically said words to the effect of, don't say anything that would get either of us into trouble. Is that the reason why you didn't mention him leaving that night? Yeah, pretty much. Greg's evidence shatters his father's alibi and it could be the key that unlocks this cold case. I'm not out for vengeance. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, he's still my dad. You know what I mean? I'm not out for vengeance at all. I'd rather see that um, justice was found. Have you accused him of murdering your sister? Yes, I have. Yeah. I said to him, why did you do it, Keith? Why did you do it? Don't like this at me. After learning of our interest in this case, Queensland Police recently approached Megan's family with a bizarre offer to pay for a memorial plaque here at Point Cartwright. I just think that they're trying to buy me and it just makes me think that they know they were wrong and they're trying to make up for what they've done and they can't do that. Well, forget the plaque. You want an investigation, don't you? An investigation would be really good. And did you ever have the opportunity to say to your dad, why? No. Will you ever ask him, do you think? Depends on whether I ever decide I want to see him again. Was it good to get it off your chest? Of course it is. <laughs> um, I mean, I've been holding on to it since I was 11 years old. I'm 23 now. That's, that's 12 years I've been holding on to it, so. That's one hell of a secret, Greg. It's one hell of a weight off my chest.